brought to you by Allstate, whose policies now include protection for your home, your family, as well as your car. You're in good hands with Allstate. And now, let's all play What's My Line? And now let's meet our award-winning panel of What's My Line. First, the delightful star of stage and television, Miss Arlene Francis. And now I have joyous warnings for Canab, Utah. Joey Bishop, Frank Sinatra, Sammy Davis Jr. are all going to be there to start their new picture, The Badlands, come Tuesday. Look out. Joey Bishop. Thank you very much. And now it's my pleasure to introduce a young lady uh, who I'm certain will give a, a nice review to the picture Badlands, Dorothy <laughs> Kilgallen. <laughs> And it's my privilege to introduce the man who raised Random House from a pamphlet to an institution, Mr. Bennett Cerf. And here's the Spengali of television, our swivel-tongued panel moderator, John <laughs> Charles Daly. <laughs> Dreadful picture, Svengali on a swivel. Well, good evening, panel. Mr. Bishop, evening. nice to have you with us again. Thank you, Mr. Daly. It's nice being back. Well, it's <laughs> now we got all the pleasant part of the program over with. We'll get down to what we're here for tonight, which is to puzzle the panel as much as we possibly can with some interesting occupations brought to the theater by some very nice people. We'll also have a famous mystery challenger before the panel a little bit later in the program. And we'll meet our first challenger after this one. Grand news panel, blindfolds, please. Have to put them on for a very special and very good reason for the first contestant that we're going to meet tonight. I know what a joy it is to you all to put them on this early, particularly the girls. Blindfolds all in place? Uh, yes. yes. All right, let's meet our first contestant. Will you enter and sign in, please? Mr. Z. Will you come over here and sit down with me? <laughs> Panel, it goes without saying that we've asked you to blindfold yourselves for very obvious reasons. We have good reason to believe that one or more members of the panel might recognize some facet of our guest's character, costume, or anything else that you might be able to think of, and therefore we've asked you to blindfold yourselves. We will tell you, however, that our guest is self-employed and that he deals in a service. And uh, that having been done, we'll uh, ask you if you know how we keep score. You do. You know how we keep score? And here's... There's the information for the audience in the theater and the audience at home. You now know, panel, that our guest is self-employed and deals in a service. Let's begin the general questioning with Bennett Cerf. Has your name, sir, appeared in the newspapers in recent days? Yes. Uh, when it appeared, did it appear on or near the front page? Yes. Was it in connection with some news story? Yes. Did it have anything to do with our exploits in the air? No. One down to nine to go, Miss Francis. Did I understand you to say that, this, uh, that our guest is self-employed, John? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. um, this means only, of course, that there is no direct continuous employment by either a corporate entity or an individual. Yes, sir. <laughs> if you want to put it that way. Uh, did you do something that has to do with transferring you from one place to another? Yes. Was that transference... Uh, on the ground? Yes. Was it in either an automobile race or a horse race? Yes. 
Um, were you the... <laughs> I'm trying to think of whether it would be a horse or an automobile. It's well, just say, were you the jockey who won an automobile race? <laughs> <laughs> That's a terrific parlay. Did you win the race at the Indianapolis Speedway? No. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Bishop. Then I know what he did. Uh, were you in the uh, Belmont race? Belmont yes. Stakes. Belmont Stakes. I don't like to mention stakes and horses. <laughs> uh, when the race was over, were uh, <laughs> were you on the horse? Yes. <laughs> the name of the horse. When, no. Very well. If I were at the race when the race was over, would I have torn up my ticket and been angry with you? <laughs> What were you on? <laughs> a horse. Carried back and shaking Possibly. Uh, am I safe in assuming that you did not ride the winner? Yes. Oh. <laughs> then I would have torn up my tickets. Uh, you were in the race, is that correct? Yes. Was the horse you were on, did it come in between fourth and eighth place? Yes. Did it come in seventh? Yes. Were you the jockey who rode carry back? Yes. Well, what am I supposed to find out, John? Uh, how right, mad he you is? Got it. <laughs> John Sellers is right. What happened? You can come in now. Bennett, I, I, I was sure this was going to happen. I didn't know who was going to ask it first, whether I'd ask it or a member of the panel. What happened? Well, we might say it was uh, one of his off days, but uh, it was just a bit of racing luck, and, uh, well, we don't know exactly. I mean, it must have been a off day for him, but uh, racing luck, and that is horse racing. They do get beat. I think, actually, John, I should explain to people who don't have a great interest in racing that carry back is something of a phenomenon. He's a little horse. Now, you stop me. If I say anything wrong, you say that's wrong and stop me. He's a little horse, but he's got tremendous courage and tremendous heart, and he likes to run races with John riding him, and he always likes to run around 7th, 8th, or ninth until he comes into the final stretch. And then all of a sudden he starts to run and he just, as somebody explained it to me, Jack Lescourie said he just eats up the horses in front of him. And I think in the Derby, which you won on him, and in the Preakness, which you won on him, in both those instances, was you, as you came around the final turn, you were back in 7th or 8th place, weren't you? Yes, that's And right. won both of the races, in you know, thrilling races, and this time it just didn't happen. That's uh, right. I which I'm sorry to say. Ah, but uh, this must be great. This is your first derby win, is it not? Yes, sir, that's right. Had you ever ridden the Preakness before? No, that was my first ride in the Preakness. And the first ride in the Preakness, and you won that. Now, how much has this little carryback won so far this year? In the, in the... I don't know uh, exactly. Well, I don't know how much he has won this year, but his uh, total earnings have been, uh, or winnings, have been 700 and about 740-some thousand dollars. Wow. And he Will cost you? originally, I think, three hundred dollars, didn't he? Yes, sir. Uh, was... Well, combined with the uh, uh, services of having him, uh, or uh, not having him bread, but uh, the mayor bread, it was a total of about seven hundred dollars. Yeah. Well, it's one—it's one of the great legends of racing that people will be talking about for years, and I must say that I'm sure you can be proud of the part you played in creating it. Thank you very much, John, Thank for you. being our guest. It's nice to have you with us. And just to finish the statistical department, John is five feet six, which is tall for a jockey. He's, he's, he's a much bigger man than you'd expect most jockeys to be, but a very good one. All right, let's meet our second contestant. Will you enter and sign in, please? Beryl? 
Nice start, right? Is it Miss or Mrs. Neistat? Mrs. Mrs. Neistat? Yes. Where are you from? Australia. Oh, wonderful. Where in Australia? Melbourne, Victoria. Melbourne, Victoria? Yes. Well, it's very nice, I must say, to have someone from Australia on the program. I don't know if that's happened before. Hasn't it? I don't think so. May I present our panel, Mrs. Neistat? Will you join me over here, please? Do you know how we keep score on what's my line? Yes. Every no answer that you can give the panel, I flip a card, ten no's, and you won the game. All right, let's let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. Panel, we can tell you that Mrs. Neistat is self-employed <clears throat> and deals in a product. And let's begin the general questioning with Joey Bishop. In a product. Uh, are you just in the United States for the summer months? No. Well, just, just hello, hello. <laughs> well, you mean just during the, the present visiting period, Joey? Actually, Mrs. Neistat, I think, to clear up, is here in, the, in this country, partly in business, I think partly in pleasure, for a period of two or three weeks at the outside. From well, what I was trying to determine, John, was whether or not that which she deals with is a seasonal type of thing. Is your product seasonal? Yes. Um... Well, I, I would say that usage and custom here would not deny it to the general populace at any time in the year, Joey, so that painfully, but the hard way, you got yourself a no. That's one down and nine to go, <laughs> Miss Gilgallon. You mean, John, that we do not regard this product as seasonal in New York? That's right. Okay. Uh, could any of us on the panel use your product? Yes. Is it found in the home? Yes. Would it be found in the kitchen? Yes. Is it edible? Yes. Uh, is it anything that grows? Yes. Uh, grows in the earth, I mean, not animal. Mm -hmm. Is it mm, vegetable yes. or fruit? Um, does it grow above the ground? Yes. Uh, do you buy it in, in grocery stores yes. or vegetable stores? Uh, does something happen to it? Is it processed after it comes out of the ground? Yes. Well, where am I? Um, is it, uh, is it ever canned? Yes. Um, would you consider it a vegetable rather than a fruit? Yes. Would it be considered a side dish at a meal? Yes. Rather than a main dish? Is it green in color? Can be. Yes. Can be, mm-hmm. Can, be, can it be some other color, too? Yeah. Well, I'm not... A, yes, it could be. I think, actually, it depends a good deal on the processing about which you spoke earlier, but I would think that green is an acceptable uh -huh. color for it. Would it, be, would it ever be considered in the line of condiments or relishes? Mm, yeah. <laughs> is it pickles? Yeah. <laughs> actually, uh... Mrs. Neistat is a pickle manufacturer, has her own company in Australia. A pickle packer. A pickle packer. <laughs> and can you say Peter picked a pickle packer, pickle pickle packer? Do they do that down in, in yes, Australia? Yes, they do that Peter picked. Yes, can I you do it? And now I'm not going to try. You're not even going to try. I thought that Dorothy was absolutely brilliant but selfish. <laughs> <laughs> it was a, a fine performance. I'm sorry we didn't give them more trouble, but I hope you've enjoyed your visit to What's My Line. It's Very much. Nice <laughs> to have you with us. Nice Thank you. Have you say good night to the public. We'll meet tonight's mystery guest in just a moment, but first, here is a word from our sponsor. Now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity, which, as is custom, requires that the panel re-blindfold itself. Panel, have you re-blinded yourself? Yes, Back on. Yes, John. Back on. Then let's ask our mystery challenger to enter and sign in, please. Panel. 
as you know, we go to a different form of questioning. One question at a time, in turn, moving clockwise. And we begin with Dorothy Kilgallen. Have you recently made a movie in Europe? Uh-uh. Oh, that's one down and nine to go, Mr. Sir. Are you decorating Broadway at the moment in some fashion or other? Uh-uh. Are you a... Wait a minute, let me, let me, we have to, we have to uh, 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 come in here for a bit now. Uh, the, the term is used very generally. Well, I mean it... the New York Theater. Ah. Uh -huh. So that changes that to a yes. Miss Francis? Are you at the present time in a musical in New York? Aha. Uh -huh. Oh, say! <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Bishop? Uh, we are safe in assuming that this is a male. Is that correct? Want to make something out of it, buddy? <laughs> no. <laughs> See, What's wrong with horse meat? <laughs> There's a new switch. He's asking us questions. <laughs> Mr. O'Dallon? I, I wasn't... Oh, oh, I'm through. Oh. You're right. No, you uh, asked it a question elicited information, Joey, so we have to count it as, as a regular... I'm sorry. Class. You're right, John. Did you recently become a father? Did I ever. Oh, <laughs> well, is it? Sneaky got me, didn't you? No. <laughs> yeah. well, well, say my name. Did. I can use the billing, please. Phil Silvers. Right. Phil Silvers is right. <laughs> The first thing we have to clear up is that uh, Do Re Mi, which is more fun than the stage ever really deserves to have, is in the St. James Theater, uh -huh. which is on... I'm 44th Street, Bennett. I was just trying to be cute. Done. Is it true you have more daughters now than Eddie Cantor, Phil? Not really, no. I have more daughters than anybody. Wait, let's get this all in perspective. Actually, I think most of you know it because it was in all of the papers. Phil was named the television father of the year. And stage father. The stage I father. I used to be on television years ago be. when it was paying. <laughs> when it was paying. <laughs> the stage father of the year and in the next breath he became father of twins. Well, I got that kind of a wife, you know. <laughs> She's a real showman. She says, well, they made him stage father. I'll press a little, you know. <laughs> I'm so glad to see men. I'm surrounded with broads in my house, you know. I've gotten a complex. I went to the Friars Club and fainted. So... <laughs> Well, Let's talk more about the show. We could use right. it, John. We'll talk some more about Do Re Mi. And Not I really. Think the You're only thing common. to say about Do Re Mi is it's got you in it and a lot of other talent. But you particularly, I'm, I'm sure that this country of ours is full of people who feel the way I do. We still see Sergeant Bilko on television. And in our house, whenever you come on, we stay with it because there's something about you that just makes me feel happy and makes me laugh. Well, John, I don't want to be the Mutual Admiration Society, but I'm surrounded, actually, with oh. I mean, no qualification really by friends and I, you especially. And please say hello to Virginia, who I saw earlier. And uh, you said something nice about me, didn't you, just now? I was on my way to say something nice about you. And you couldn't think of it the second no, time? No, 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 no. It, it was so sincere that I got flustered. And of course, this program. You made it, you know, Bennett. You don't know how big you've become, in spite of Dorothy's wonderful introduction of you. You know that you're in the crossword puzzle of TV Guide? <laughs> Well, it's wonderful to see Dorothy again and Sinatra's oldest delinquent son. <laughs> and lovely Ali. And Phil, I have to add something to Bennett. I went up to my old preparatory school, Tilton School, for graduation weekend, and the commencement speaker told a story and gave Bennett a credit line. Really? Yeah. When, what does it cost to see this man? What is it? Well, I don't know. I think they're probably going to have him examined. Give me all the cards for the diaper service. <laughs> we can use it. <laughs> Thank you, Phil, for coming. Thank you. It's a delight as always, John. Nice to take care. Much luck and we'll have a, another contestant after this word from our alternate. And now let's meet another contestant. Will you enter and sign in, please? Right there. J.R. Rosen. Is that right, sir? Right. Rosen, where are you from? Boston. Boston? Oh, fine. Nice to have you with us up in that country just this past few days. 
May I present our panel, Mr. Rosen? Mm -hmm. And now, would you join me over here, please, sir? Do you know how we keep score? I do. All right, if you know how we keep score, we'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. We can tell you that Mr. Rosen is self-employed and deals in a product. And we'll begin the general questioning with Arlene Francis. Mr. Rosen is the famous name in the dress business. There is a Rosen family from Boston that has to do with dresses. But may I rule you out of that, Mr. Rosen? You certainly may on that one. But there is a product connected with what you do. Is it a product that I might use? You could. Is it a product that if I did use it, somebody could see me use it? Somebody might watch me use it? No. No, I don't think so. One it's a private and... product. Well, no, it, does, it just isn't one that you would probably use in such manner and degree as to be uh, seen by others in the process of so doing. Oh, one down and nine right to go. Yeah, in other words, he has the kind of product you have to pull the window shade down. <laughs> <laughs> You son of a gun, Mr. Rosen. <laughs> um, is it a product that is normally found in the house? It would be. Is it found uh, more in one room than in another? Not necessarily. With your permission, Mr. Rosen, I would say this would be pretty much a matter of subjective choice, Joe. You would pick a place, probably, in which you would choose to put this product. To that degree, it would be found war more in one, perhaps, section of the house than another. Is that all right with you, sir? It's all right. So you go ahead. Oh, in other words, it could be found in any room of it the house. It could be, but it's most likely that uh, you would find it in one section of the house rather than another. <laughs> uh, uh, that's funny, John, because that's the first question I asked, and we're back to it again. <laughs> L let's uh, perhaps clarify it. When I, I say room and you say section, are we talking <laughs> of the same thing? No, actually. And you know, I'm, I'm almost persuaded we ought to give you a no. I, I, I wish it would, John, because it's becoming embarrassing. <laughs> well, I think actually it's confusing you. I was trying not to give you a no because uh, it could be found in any room in the house. What I was trying to convey is that you would tend to find it in one section of the house rather than another in most instances. Oh. Does that still confuse it? Well, no, what, but what's confusing me is you've got the card halfway up. <laughs> <laughs> That's confusing me. The rooms don't confuse me. Um, is it then a product that you would find in one section of the house more than in another section of the house? I think we could say yes. Section? Yes. 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 <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. But not room. <laughs> Good. Uh, is it uh, more decorative than uh, practical? It's... Oh, no. Practical. Am I in trouble again, John? Uh, you're giving me, oh, a dreadful time here. It's... it's you want me to be less brilliant, John? I'll be less brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> it has practical applications that are overriding. And to the degree that it might be decorative, this would be only incidental to the practicalities which were involved in the gathering <laughs> into and of the product. That's what two dollars eight to go in the Uh, w when you say that this is used in a certain section of the house, could you be referring to the sleeping quarters? <laughs> we say, yes, we could, could be, but not necessarily. I'm sorry, because actually we're, we're, running, we're running out of time, and I have to, I have to put all John. the cards over because I want enough time to explain it. Mr. Golly, Rosen. I never got, never got a whack at this. I know you didn't, Bennett. All right. You want a whack at me instead? <laughs> I, I thought it had something to do with the maybe air conditioning or ventilators. No, but that's close I'll because bet. Mr. Rosen makes diplomas. Well, uh, <laughs> not Latin ones. Makes college diplomas. Yeah. Latin ones for Harvard. And does yeah. Latin ones and English ones for Harvard. You've done them for how many years, Mr. Rosen? 46 years. For 46 years. I'm sorry we've run out of time because it's a very interesting subject and I wish we could go into it more. Mr. Rosen, thank you so much for being thank our you. guest. It's nice to have had you with us and what's my life.
And we have run out of time. With the panel's permission, I will say good night for one and all, and thank you all for being with us on What's My Line. What's My Line is a CBS Television Network production in association with Mark Goodson and Bill Totman. This is Ralph Paul speaking. Do you really think everyone watches Bringing Up Buddy Mondays on most of these stations? Of course, love. Everyone with taste. <laughs>